Okay, good. Go ahead and come down. And again, if when we come down to center, if the position that we're using doesn't work for you, you can always roll over onto your back. You could even stay seated, even in a chair. And when you do come down into this position, if this is what you choose, your arms are stacked and your forehead rests on top of the stacked arms. And your legs are just a little bit wider than the level of the hips and the um, tops of the feet are down, toes untucked, unless that cramps the bottom of the foot, which it does for some folks. You could always kind of tuck the toe if you needed to. But this is about the time when you just welcome yourself to your practice and begin this transition and notice what that's like from the busyness and um, all that you've done today, taking a more inward focus by paying attention to your body. You're just feeling the actual sensations, feeling into your body, noticing what might feel tight, this is done without judgment, what feels open and relaxed, what feels dull, whatever is within your awareness, that's what you pay attention to. And then bringing your awareness to the breath. Again, the actual physical sensations of breathing. Feeling each breath as it comes in and it goes out. Just letting the breath be just as it is, but softening the body so that the breath can begin to move without restriction and letting it find its own rhythm and pace. And you're just simply creating space for the breath to deepen and the breath to lengthen. Taking note of this quiet breath and trying to duplicate this even as we move today. So on your next breath, you can just draw the legs together Use your hands down by your sides to help you press back into a child's pose. To draw the tailbone back, the torso down towards the thighs, forehead down. You can keep the arms soft here just for a breath or two. As you breathe out, let the hips sink back or a little bit more deeply. Anyway, feel the rib cage or the belly up against the thighs. Relaxing through the neck, the face and the head. Begin each breath out, hips sink back towards the heels. And from this sinking back from the heels, you will walk, just keep in this position, but walk the hands away from you a little bit. So you start to stretch now under the armpits. You still try to sink back through the tailbone down towards the heels, even as the arms walk forward here. Pressing the palms of the hands into the floor now just to start to activate the shoulders underneath the armpit. Good. And then press into the hands and come up into a table pose. And as you exhale, you'll just round the spine to the chin to the chest. And as you inhale, open up the spine, drop the belly down towards the floor. Sometimes it's helpful to Close your eyes as you do the first couple of these, exhaling and rounding. Inhaling and opening. Letting the breath guide your movement and letting your attention rest on the sensations of moving the spine in this way. And just one more here into the cat position. Sometimes it even feels good to hold there, press down through the palms, even just moving a little bit through the shoulders. Good. And coming back to a neutral position. 
So tailbone long, low belly, and the ribs draw in, pressing down through the hands and circle the neck. So much like you'll circle the neck, just in a full rotation and staying present with the sensations in the neck and in the head. If you find a place where it would feel good to stay and breathe, you're welcome to do that. Bring the head and the neck back into a neutral position. Spin the thumbs um, away from you. So you get a little stretch in the forearms. Not everybody's fingers can face the knees like these can here. But once you get there, if you feel like it, you can lean back a little bit to deepen the stretch in the forearm, just a sensation we don't get to every day. Take a breath and then spin the fingertips forward again. Right, tuck the toes and unfold from the knees into down dog. As you begin to pedal out the feet here, just watch the upper body alignment. So pressing down through the pointer finger thumb, inner elbows face one another, and the head is in between the upper arms. Deeply bending one knee, letting the opposite heel come down. Tailbone lifting, low belly drawing in. And then come down to the knees. Okay. You'll circle the right hip. So you'll draw the uh, right knee back, up, down, and around. Just about five here. I'm going to do some hip openers later. And perfectly OK to let the upper body bend a little bit. So you can certainly soften the elbows as you do this. But you're working on range of motion. Then reverse and go the other way. So this one, as you see here, it's you know you do resist gravity a little bit as you draw that uh, knee out to the side, back down and around. And again, perfectly OK, especially to bend the left elbow as you do this. Sometimes even taking a look back to see the range of motion. But, and then you'll go ahead and put the knee down here and we'll do the other side. So draw the left knee back, out to the side, down and around. Watching your body breathe here too. So I know this can be a challenging movement, but watching your body breathe, breathing in and breathing out. And then reverse and go the other way. So draw it out to the side again. A little more challenging if you do it that way, then down and around, out to the side. Good. And then once the knee comes down here, you can separate the knees just a little bit and let yourself just kind of rock from side to side. Not a real wide separation here, but just let the pelvis kind of sink from side to side. And tuck the toes one more time, unfold from the knees, all the way back up into down dog. Good, notice. Notice the body beginning to uh, feel a little bit more at ease in this down dog. Good, walk the feet up towards the hands. You'll be in a forward fold, which means knees stay soft, tailbone lifting, low belly drawing in. And then arms out to the sides, use the strength of the upper back as you drop the pelvis down, arms out to the sides, reach up and overhead, and then exhale, lower the arms down. On your next breath in, arms go right back to that starting position. Inhale, reach up, and exhale, lower them down. All the way into a forward fold here. Let's go ahead. Um, breathe sink, she can't hear me here, so. There you go, good. So you're in this forward fold. We're gonna do this a couple of times. So arms out to the sides, unfold from the hips, reach up all the way up and overhead. And then you exhale back into that same position. So exhale, arms out to the sides, nice deep bend in the knee, fold forward, good. And one more time, arms out to the sides, all the way up and overhead, press down, good. And last one here, exhale, forward fold. 
slide your hands to your shins and lift yourself halfway up. Good. And then exhale and fold, really squeeze that low belly. Good. Step back with the right foot and pause there into the eye lunge. Good. Heel over the ball of the foot. And we're going to turn um, this right heel out to the side to anchor it and then inhale, reach all the way up into a warrior two. So both warrior two agree, so face the long side. There you go. One side of that, release the right arm down. Inhale, reach the left arm up and overhead. Nice left side body stretch. Inhale, coming back to warrior two. Bend the left arm, reach the right arm up and over into side angle. Just pause here for a breath. So you're reaching down through the outer edge of the right heel, really anchoring and then lengthening all the way through the fingertips. Pressing down through the left forearm so that you lengthen the left rib cage left from away from the left hip lip, left hip point. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Just good. Inhale <laughs> all the way back up here. Good. When you're ready, you're going to just kind of pinwheel the arms down onto either side of the left foot here and step back in the down dog. That's it. Step all the way back. It'll feel good on that left leg to pedal the feet out here. Good. Inhale forward into plank. Good. And when you're ready, you can turn into side plank onto the right side. So just coming to the outside edge of the right foot. If that is really challenging today, you could uh, bend the right knee down to the floor. But just to challenge this right plank so that we know what we're doing here is to lift up the, the right side body lifts up and in. Yeah. And to know that we're doing that, sometimes you just drop it down just a little bit. Drop the yes. Drop the right hip point down and then lift it up and then drop it down a little bit and then lift it up. That's how you know you're lifting. <laughs> there you go. Good, and that, it usually doesn't take long if you wanted to do anything fancy from here. You could certainly lift the left leg. Um, you don't have to, yeah, if you felt anchored. <laughs> it's all for fun, it's all for fun, ladies. Good, go ahead, that'll be enough. So take the left arm down to the floor here. Good, and when you're ready, you'll exhale, lower yourself all the way down, unless you wanna come up through Chaturanga, good. And Bree's going to lift into Cobra. Jessica, I can see you are in Upward Dog. Good. So Jess, you can move right back into Down Dog. Bree, you're going to take the forehead down to the floor and then move back into Down Dog as you breathe out. Excellent. Just take a recovery breath here, pedaling out the feet. And then when you're ready, you're going to look forward to the hand. Step forward, right foot. Heel first, right in between the hands, and then step forward left so that you're in a forward fold. Good. Take a breath. And then drop the sit bones down, arms out to the sides. Inhale, reach all the way up, and exhale, lower the arms down just into heart center or all the way down to your sides. Your choice. Take a breath and notice the right side of the body. On your next breath in, inhale, reach all the way up, arms out to the sides, up and overhead, and then exhale, forward fold. Slide your hands to your shins, halfway up here, and then exhale, fold again, squeeze the belly. Step back with the left foot into a high lunge, we'll repeat the sequence on the other side. Good, so you'll anchor the left heel, and then arms will come up and both hip points face the long side of the mat warrior two can take a look out over the right fingertips and as you do that really draw the right knee out towards the pinky side of the foot there you go actually the sit bones are coming together on the back side of the body tailbone lengthening and lifting good and then you'll release the left arm down and right arm up and overhead for a side body stretch here just the reverse warrior, such beautiful length through the right side. Inhale, come back into warrior two, and then bend the right arm into side angle. So a couple of breaths here, just to anchor down through the, um, the left heel all the way through the left fingertips, pressing down through the right forearm. Again, we find length through the left side rib cage rather than collapsing down into it, so that point reaches away and Jessica, if you slide your right arm towards your right knee, 
Yes. And then press down and lengthen the underneath of the rib cage. That's it. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. You're going to get a deeper stretch on the left side. Good. And then you'll inhale, come all the way back up here. And when you're ready, you'll pin all the arms down to either side of the foot and step back into the dog. And then inhale forward into plank. And the breeze is going to be spinning away from the camera here, but you're going to come onto the outer edge of the left foot into side plank. So good. Arm reaches up. If there's tension in the shoulder, you can always place the fingertips at the shoulder. But again, to know that we're lifting, you kind of drop that left hip point down and then back up. Yeah, just, and it's kind of a baby drop and a baby lift, but it helps you feel the engagement that we're looking for. So again, in yoga, we're always looking for alignment and activation, and that's the activation. But again, if you wanted to try something fancy with the right leg, you can lift it for a breath. You wouldn't have to be there long. <laughs> Good. And then go ahead and take the right arm down. And you can lower your down, your choice. That could be knees, chest, chin. You could lower all the way down. Or you could chaturanga into upward facing dog. Bree's going to slide through here. Press down through the tops of the feet. Lift the head, neck, and shoulders. Bree and Jess, you're breathing without just a slight tuck in the chin there, Jess. The cut. Yeah, yeah, just a slight forehead down. Jess, you're going to move right back into down dog here, rolling across the tops of the toes. Good. And looking forward to the hands, stepping forward, left foot. Heel first, right in between the hands. And then stepping forward, right, good, forward, fall. When you're ready, drop the sit bones down, the arms out to the sides, lift all the way up, and then exhale, lower the hands down to your heart or down by your sides, whatever's comfortable here. And then notice the whole body and let the whole body breathe. Good. Lower the arms down to your sides. Place the fingertips right on the shoulders, take the elbows together in front. And as you inhale, draw the shoulders up, or not the shoulders, the elbows up back down and down. So just moving these elbows and you're trying to touch them together in the front of the body to get the stretch on the back. And then reverse and go the other way. So yeah, as the elbows come up now, now you broaden across the collarbones. And then lower the arms down. Interlace your fingers behind you. Draw the hands down towards the floor of the palms. If they don't come together, that's okay. Just reach the arms down here. Lift the head. Just keep broadening and breathing, sternum lifting, but low ribs drawing in. So you do want a little containment through the low ribs as you lift the sternum. And if you want a deeper stretch, you can uh, bend the knees into a forward fold and hinge forward. Just be very mindful of the capacity of the joint in this stretch, so you don't want to go beyond it. Sometimes if um, you do have the flexibility to pull the hands away from the sacrum, Gravity could take over here. So you still want activation, drawing together through the shoulder blades. Take the hands back to the sacrum, unhinge from the hip, use the strength of the upper back, and lift it all the way up here, and then roll the shoulders a couple of times. And reverse and go the other way. Separate the feet here, let the shoulders rest and let your arms swing and wrap around the body as you twist from side to side, letting the heel lift in the direction that you're moving here. Very fluid. Go ahead, let the arms come down, feet come down. Separate the feet just a little bit wider, toes facing forward. 
let the weight of the body come into the hands, um, bend at the knees, breathe, turn the fingertips out and drop the right shoulder down towards the left knee. Uh, it just kind of gets into the back of the body, that's it. And then you'll just kind of toggle back and forth. You don't, for some folks, you don't have to go as far as we is to get the stretch. Uh, it's just this kind of intention of moving in that direction that'll get it for you. And then go ahead, come back up to um, that same position. Feet are out wide, where it might be easier if you face the camera to squeeze forward, hinge forward into a forward fold. That's it. In these forward folds, um, the alignment is to have the tailbone lifting, the belly drawing in. Without knees collapsing in, and the activation is actually a very gentle um, engagement of feeling like you're drawing the inner edges of the feet together. That engages the inner thigh. It's, we don't overactivate, but we don't want to just be hanging here. So a little activation through the inner thighs. Take the left hand over to the right foot and reach up the right arm. Just sit there for a breath. Okay. And then go ahead and untwist. And you can walk to the other side. So right hand to the left foot, reach up, reach up right. Left. No. Good. And then go ahead and untwist. Good. Come right back. Nice deep bend in the knee. Unhinge from the hip and lift from the upper back. And then heel toe together. Inhale, reach your arms up and overhead, interlace your fingers. And as you exhale, tip to the right. Press down through the feet. Stop right there and breathe. So ground down through the left foot and reach through the left upper arm. Inhale, come back to center. And then exhale, go ahead and tip left. As you tip here, feeling grounded through your right foot. And then a little reach through the right upper arm. And then inhale all the way back up and exhale, lower the arms down. Interlace the fingers in front of you and just roll the wrists. It kind of feels funny, but you interlace the fingers, you roll the wrists. And then change, so we usually have a dominant um, position for that outer pinky. So just change the position of the pinky here <laughs> so that you have the opposite pinky out and then roll and just notice that, that feels kind of wonky too. All right, good, wiggle out your fingers. Good. Shift the weight over to the right foot and just roll the left a couple of times get to ankle rolls yet. Just balance, watch the position of the head when you're balancing, pulling it back. Wiggle out your toes and then place that foot down and go to the other side. So left foot grounds, right foot lifts. And then go ahead and place the right foot down. Look down at the toes. Pick up all the toes here. And then as um, you're ready, you can try to lower down just the big toe. And then stretch across the ball of the foot to the baby toe. And then lower the, the middle three toes down. And then lift the toes again. And this time try to lower down just the baby toe. Stretch across the ball of the foot to the big toe and then the middle three toes. And lower the arms down. And as you are ready, shift the weight over to the right foot, up onto the toes of the left, the heel moves towards the ankle. Lift up and out of the right hip joint. Good. 
then when you're ready, when you feel balanced, you can place the foot either at the ankle, at the calf, or up and over the knee joint. It can certainly stay with one toe on the floor, the whole foot on the floor here. How you express the arms is up to you, but activation of the upper body is a part of this. So if arms are up and overhead, they are reaching and shoulder blades are drawing down. Your eyes are focused on one point. And you're aware of the whole body breathing. And you can go ahead and lower the left foot down, arms down, and then shift to the other side. So right foot will ground up under the toes of the left, and turn the heel towards the ankle. That'll be the starting point. Lift up and out of the left hip joint and then decide where you'll place the foot. It's either at the ankle, at the calf, or up over the knee. If the arms are at heart center, you press evenly into the palms of the hands. Feel an activation if they're up and overhead. Shoulders are drawing down as the fingers reach. Eventually, you're aware of the whole body breathing. And as you are ready, you'll come out the way you came. Lower the arms, lower the foot down. Go ahead. And then come all the way down onto your back. Knees are bent, feet flat on the floor. But just a little work for the low belly. Press the palms of the hands into the thigh right down towards the hip crease here. And as you press the hands into the thighs, you'll try to take the pubic bone towards the belly button and feel the low belly engage. And so you're holding that, but you're also breathing. You're pressing down through the feet, pressing the palms of the hands right into the very tops of the thighs, pulling the pubic bone to the navel center, but resisting that by holding and pressing the palms of the hands into the thighs. Right. And then go ahead and release. Separate the feet wide and let the legs just drop from side to side. Maybe close your eyes and be aware of the movement. You may feel this through the inner thigh, the outer thigh, the low back. It creates space around the sacrum and through the sides of the body. And then bring the knees back up to center. Place the hands behind the head. As you exhale, so that we work the lower belly. Now we'll work the upper belly right underneath the floating rib cage. As you exhale, You'll lift the head, neck, and shoulders up towards the ceiling. And as you inhale, lower back down. It's not really all that high, to be honest. It's a straight up and a straight back down. And you coordinate your breath with the movement. Exhaling, lifting and squeezing, inhaling, releasing and lowering. And then you can go ahead and lower down. You can slide the hands out from underneath your head and again, let the legs just drop from side to side very gently here. <clears throat> Bring the knees back up to center here. You'll lift the feet off the floor so that the shins are parallel to the floor. Good. Arms now come out to the sides, palms facing down. The legs, as you lower them down, do not need to come all the way to the floor. With you just rolling across the sacrum, lowering the legs down towards the floor, and then uh, using the strength of the belly to lift them back up to center, where you're uh, rolling from side to side. Roll the legs down towards the window. 
but then use the strength of the abdomen to pull them back up. And we're trying to keep um, the femur at about 90 degrees inside the pelvis here. So as you lower the legs down, but go to the other side, using really the strength of the belly to lift and lower the legs here. Sometimes um, even doing this, I know we don't have a block handy, but if you're gonna do this on your own, you could try putting a block in between the legs too, to even engage the uh, inner thighs as you do it. Doesn't take many, you know, just one more on each side. Good. More. Good, and then go ahead, uh, place the feet on the floor, reach your arms overhead, extend the legs along the floor and give yourself a full body stretch here. And then you can go ahead and roll over onto your belly. Forehead down, arms down by the sides. You work the front body and now you work the back. So press the tops of the feet into the floor. Take the pubic bone towards the navel. This isn't to tuck the tailbone, but to rather um, create some length in the, the low back. Roll the glutes together and then press the hip points down. As you exhale here, you're going to um, reach the legs back and then lift them off the floor just an inch or so. It doesn't have to be real high. Good. And then head, neck, and shoulders will lift if the low back feels comfortable. You, feel you can interlace the fingers behind you and breathe. So as you breathe in and your lungs fill with air, you lift a little higher. And as you breathe out, you come down just a little bit. Just in several breaths, you're going to keep the chin tucked so as not to compress the back of the head. And then turn your head to one side and come down and rest. Bend your knees in this position and let your legs drop from side to side. then press up into a table pose. Just a couple of cat cow in this position. Sit yourself off to one side and um, knees bent, feet flat on the floor here, breathe you. Yeah, that's fine. You're going to, yep, that's fine. You're gonna cross the right leg over so that the right ankle is above the left knee joint. So yeah, take your hands behind you and uh, press the fingertips into the floor and begin to lift the sternum. Good. You know, and if you need a deeper stretch, all you have to do is slide the left foot in towards the body. So you can just, uh, the left foot can draw in closer to the body so that it deepens the stretch. Good. And you can rock from side to side a little bit. And if you don't have enough stretch there, the further you sit up into this, the deeper the stretch, you can even hold the leg like a baby. You could kind of, yeah, that's it. You could, and then draw it into the chest here. Hold there, just breathe a little outer hip stretch. We'll do more in a moment. And then uh, go ahead and release that foot down to the floor and we'll do the other side. So left, yeah, and just let it kind of settle in there. Fingertips behind you, lifting the stomach. The further you walk your fingertips in towards the, the, the buttocks here and the higher you sit up and you can also slide the right foot in towards the body. You could also take a hold here. So let this stretch meet you where you are. If you hold, just kind of hugging it very gently, turning inward and letting the body breathe. Okay. 
You can release that foot down here, take the legs out wide and into a wide legged. Um, yep, there you go. Good wide legged position here. Pull the toes back, reach through the heel. Feel the femurs rolling out, not in. Take a look. Good. And then you can walk yourself forward. So again, um, the activation here is to, to keep the femurs or the toes the femurs from rolling in, toes facing up, even as the body and the torso walks forward. You find a place where you can be at ease, comfortable, still, and be aware of breathing. Lock yourself back up. Slide the left arm down to the inner edge of the left leg. Right arm is going to reach up and over as you hinge. And if this creates tension through the, the right arm or shoulder, just place the fingertips at the shoulder or behind the back or at the sacrum. Pay attention to the legs for a breath, which is to make sure that they're active. So toes pulling back, the hamstrings reaching down into the floor. Inhale and come back up. Turn. All you're going to do is a baby twist towards that left leg and hinge forward. I'm going to change the stretch a little bit. You don't have to take the forehead down is so much as stay long through the back and you think about the lower belly coming down and then the upper belly. Inhale and come back up. And then the side body stretch the other way here. So the right arm is just going to slide to the inner edge here, left arm up and overhead. And again, adjust the left arm. So where it is going to allow you to turn inward and breathe. So any tension in the shoulder, you can place the left hand around the back of the sacrum. Inhale, come back up. Let's going to turn towards the right leg here, hinge forward. Coming to just that point where you have a stretch that you can also be aware of breathing. You kind of know you've gone too far and you're asking yourself, is this over? or if you feel the leg shaking or you're experiencing any pain, you want to get to the point where you can breathe. And inhale, come back up here. So draw the legs together, feet flat on the floor, fingertips behind you, knees bent, and let the legs drop from side to side. So even in this position, just you can separate the legs a little bit. And then coming into a table position. Going to just slide the right knee into the midline and take the left knee and place it behind the right knee. So it crosses behind. The, the feet separate away from one another and you can drop the pelvis down in between the legs. So, and then sit the torso up here. So you don't have to be in a, yeah. You're going to let the pelvis come all the way down and then sit upright. So it's not really a child's pose here. Yeah, sit the, yeah, exactly. Let the pelvis sink down here. Good. 
If that's uncomfortable for the knees, there's a couple things you can do. One would be to sit on a block or a blanket. And the other would just to be to, if it's really uncomfortable for the knees here, just uncross the legs and move it. And you can put the foot flat on the floor. As you sit upright, watching for a rounding in the low back. So you want to lengthen through the low back, right up through the whole spine, the back of the neck. And the right arm comes up and then straight down the back. Right arm comes up, straight down the back here, good. And then the left hand comes around. Your fingertips may or may not touch in the back. Okay, just hold here for a breath and breathe. It's in this position that if you wanted to fold forward, you could just hinge at the hip and come forward a bit so you can stretch again. All of this is intended to draw your attention more deeply inward. And you can go ahead and you'll come back up, release the arms. You're going to take the hands forward back into a table pose. So just kind of roll across the tops of the knees here. Slide the neck of the left knee into the midline, let the right knee come behind, separate the feet a little bit, and then sit back right in between feet here. So, so as you settle down, you're looking to have both, um, both of the sit bones connected to the floor. You may find that you know there's a difference with the left knee underneath now, or the left knee on top. Again, you could take support, you could uncross the legs, just place the left foot flat on the floor if that was, if this position is uncomfortable. So as you settle in here, lengthen through the low back, right up through the back of the neck. Inhale, reach the left arm up and overhead, bend at the elbow so that the hand comes right in between the shoulder blades here. And let the arm open and then you can take the left arm behind. The fingertips may or may not interlace, that's okay. If you want to, you can hinge forward to deepen the stretch. You can go ahead and inhale, come all the way back up, release the hands, come forward into a table. Come. Just go ahead and lower yourself all the way down onto your back, hug your knees into your chest. And then you can find a happy baby here. So sole of the feet up towards the ceiling, bend at the knees, and you're finding either the shins, the ankles, the feet. Letting yourself just rock from side to side. Go ahead and release the feet from the hands here. And you can make your way into um, Shavasana for relaxation. If there's anything else that your body needs before you move into relaxation, feel free to do that now. That can be just an overhead stretch, whatever. When you're moving into Shavasana, taking care to support your head and neck with a thin cushion or pillow. If there's any discomfort in the low back, you support that by placing a pillow or a blanket beneath the knees. And we'll be taking um, about 12 minutes here to move through the mountain meditation. And we begin to, in this meditation, embody the qualities of a mountain. It's a beautiful visualization and analogy that is both relaxing, but gives us some wisdom for life. And when you're ready, allowing your eyes to close and bringing your awareness to the breath. 
and just notice what it's like for you as you begin this transition more deeply inward. Feeling each breath as it comes in and it goes out. Allowing the breath to be just as it is without trying to change it or regulate it in any way. Allowing it to flow easily and naturally with its own rhythm and pace. Knowing that you are breathing perfectly well right now and there is nothing for you to do. Gradually allowing the body to be still. So while you are resting, you are resting with a sense of dignity, a sense of resolve, a sense of being complete and whole in each moment. Letting an image form in your mind's eye of the most magnificent or beautiful mountain you know have seen or can imagine. Letting it gradually come into greater focus. Allowing the sense of this mountain, beginning to feel its overall shape, its lofty peak or peaks that are high in the sky. The large base that is rooted in the bedrock of the earth's crust. You sense its steep or its gently sloping sides. Notice how massive it is, how solid, how unmoving, and how beautiful, whether from afar or up close. Perhaps your mountain has snow blanketing its top and the trees that reach down to the base. There may be streams and waterfalls that cascade down the slopes. There may be one peak or a series of peaks or meadows and high lakes. Observing it, noting its qualities, and when you are ready, see if you can bring the mountain into your own body. So the mountain. In your mind's eye, you become one. You begin to share in the massiveness and in the stillness and in the majesty. You become the mountain. With each breath, becoming a little bit more a breathing mountain, alive and vital, yet unwavering in your inner stillness, completely what you are beyond words and thought, a centered, grounded, unmoving presence. As you sit here, becoming aware that as the sun travels across the sky, the light and the shadows and the colors are changing virtually moment by moment in the mountain stillness. And the surface, it teems with life and activity. Streams flowing, melting snow, waterfalls, plants and wildlife. And as the mountain sits, seeing and feeling 
on night follows day and day follows night. The bright warming sun followed by the cool night sky that is studded with stars. And then the gradual dawning of a new day. Through it all, the mountain just sits, experiencing change in each moment, constantly changing, yet always just being itself. It remains still as the seasons flow into one another, as the weather changes moment by moment and day to day. Calmness abides all change. In summer, there is no snow except for the very peaks or in crags shielded from sunlight. In fall, the mountain wears a coat of brilliant fiery colors. And in winter, a blanket of snow and ice. But in any season, it may find itself at times enshrouded in clouds or fog or freezing rain. People may come to see the mountain and comment on how beautiful it is or how it is not a good day to see the mountain, that it's too cloudy, rainy, or dark. But none of this matters to the mountain, which remains at all times its essential self. Clouds come and clouds go. Tourists may like it or not. The mountain's magnificence and beauty are not changed one bit by whether people see it or not. So seen or unseen, in sun, in clouds, broiling or frigid, day or night, the mountain sits being itself. At times, it's visited by violent storms, buffeted by snow and rain and winds of unthinkable magnitude. And yet, the mountain just sits. And then spring comes, and trees leaf out, flowers bloom. Birds sing. Streams overflow with waters of melting snow. Through it all, the mountain continues to sit, unmoved by the weather, by what happens on the surface, unmoved by the world of appearances. It remains its essential self. Through the seasons, through the weather, through the activity ebbing and flowing on its surface. In the same way as we sit, in meditation or relaxation, we can learn to experience the mountain. We can embody the same central unwavering stillness and groundedness in the face of everything that changes in our lives over seconds, over hours and over years. We experience constantly the changing nature of mind and body and of the outer world. We have periods of light and darkness, activity and inactivity, moments of color and moments of drabness. We experience storms of varying intensity in our mind and in our bodies. We endure periods of darkness and pain, as well as moments of uplift and joy even our appearance constantly changes, experiencing a weather of its own. But by becoming the mountain, we can link up with its strength and stability and adopt it for our own. We can use its energies to support our energy, to encounter each moment with mindfulness, equanimity, and clarity. It helps us to see that our thoughts and our feelings are preoccupations.
the things that happen to us are very much like the weather on the mountain. We tend to take so much personally, but the strongest characteristic of the mountain is impersonal. The weather of our lives is not to be ignored, it's to be encountered, honored, felt for what it is, and held with an awareness. And in holding it in this way, we come to know a deeper silence, stillness and wisdom. Mountains have much to teach us and more if we can let it in. So when you're ready, you'll take a deeper breath. Take a moment just to recognize the ease, your own inner awareness that comes from resting the body and the mind. Maybe helpful at this point is to wiggle your fingers and toes. Sometimes bending the knees or even placing your feet flat on the floor can help reground you. But set an intention to carry this inner awareness and ease with you as you move to and through the remainder of your day. You can roll over onto one side. It is helpful to come all the way back up to a seated position eventually, but to take your time. And if it feels comfortable to you, you're welcome to place your hands around the heart in any way that feels good and hold forward the healing movements that you may have received today during your practice. Namaste. Thank you both. Thank you.